So this is by no means a, this is only a, a, the barest sketch of a proof, but just to it's just to uh, to indicate uh, to some sense the uh, the advanced mathematics now. Uh, this is even actually just just 19th century mathematics. It gets even even more advanced in the 20th century. But um, okay, so that's the prime number theorem. Um, it tells you that in some sense the, the primes do have some large scale structure. So you know I can't tell you what the nth prime is, but I can tell you roughly what it is, and because of that I can tell you, for example roughly how many primes there are between one and one trillion. Okay, it's hard to get an exact count, but I can give you an approximate count. So I, I know things like the rough density, I can, I, I can approximately say the density of the primes in any given uh, region. But uh, despite that, the primes still uh, behave very randomly. So uh, the picture in the background, this is the same picture on the title screen, um, this is, uh, th these are the primes. So every black dot is a prime. So um, it's a bit hard to see, but um, see, you may see, uh, at the very top left-hand corner, there are two black dots which are consecutive. Okay, those are the primes two and three. Okay, so um, every every black dot is a prime. So there's there's one and then two, three, and then you can see two white dots next to it. There's five and seven, and then there's a gap, and then there's eleven. Uh, where's my mouse pointer? Yeah, so there's two and three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and so forth, and it and it goes on and on and on and on and on, um, and. In some sense, this, uh, you just get all these collection of dots, and they look kind of random. Um, okay, uh, they're, they're, uh, on, the one, on, one, on one hand, they look kind of random, but they, there is some large-scale structure. They, they seem to have roughly uniform density, um, and that's, that's, that's the prime number theorem. But they also have some patterns. You may notice that there are certain columns here which are, have no black in them. They're just all white. Um, and if you actually look a bit more carefully, there's also certain diagonal lines, if I can find one. Um, there are certain diagonal lines with, 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 um, with no black in them and so forth. Uh, and that's because of what we call local structure in the primes. So not every number has a chance to be prime. So for example, almost all primes are odd, right, with one exception. Um, and that, that actually um, means that every other column here is actually white. And so, so apart from these two dots, there are no other adjacent, uh, adjacent pairs of primes. Um, you can also show that, that, that any two primes, so, so any primes are adjacent to a multiple of six. That the EMOP is six plus one, EMOP is six minus one, uh, with two exceptions, two and three. But everybody else has to be co-prime to two and co-prime to three. And that this means that they must, they can't be multiple of six, or multiple six plus two, or multiple six plus three. They must be multiple six plus or minus one. Or the last digit of a prime must be either one, three, seven, or nine, with two exceptions, two and five, but other than those. And th those patterns are what's causing these, these big uh, white stripes inside here. So the primes contain within sort of three. Um, interrel uh, three um, different features that interact with each other. So on the one hand, they have this large scale structure. We have this uniform density. You know, we, we sort of know roughly how many primes are on this box. We have this local structure, which means that there are certain lines we have no primes in them. But other than that, they look random. So they should be distributed randomly. Now actually proving that they're distributed randomly is really quite tough. But uh, those are the sort of three features of the primes that are sort of, uh, um, that, that, uh, uh, that somehow control the behavior. And we, we understand each of these facts separately to some extent, and we understand how they interact. And because of that, we've been able to make a lot of progress on understanding uh, various um, things about the primes, and we, we have proven some, some major results about the primes. Now, as I said, I can't tell you all of them uh, of our progress, but I can give you some sample results. So for example, here is um, one famous theorem in number theory. It's called Vinogradov's theorem, 1937. Uh, the great Russian mathematician uh, Vinogradov showed that every large, odd, if you have an odd number n, which is large enough, every sufficiently large odd number is expressible as the sum of three primes. So even though we don't know where the primes are, uh, we can say, in fact, that, that most, almost all odd numbers, at least, are the sum of three primes. Um, the reason why we stick to odd numbers is that primes tend to be odd, as I said before. And if you add three odd numbers together, you get an odd number. So it's sort of natural to restrict to odd numbers. Um, we don't know if every large even number is some of three primes. That's, um, okay, so this is Vinogradov's theorem. It was proven by uh, lots of tools, uh, Fourier analysis in particular, which I won't discuss here. Um, it's partial progress towards uh, a famous conjecture called Goldbach's conjecture. Uh, well, there's two conjectures. There's the even conjecture and the odd conjecture. The, the odd conjecture is, uh, is that every, not just uh, every large odd number, but in fact, every odd number should be um, bigger than five, should be the sum of three primes. Um, so that's, um, that's the Goldbach conjecture. Um, it's not solved yet, but Vinogradov's theorem is a very major step in the direction. It, it uh, says that every large number is some of, some of, um, 
n primes, uh, three primes. How large is large? Well, Vinogradov's original proof didn't say. Uh, he just said, well, large enough. And, but later, uh, people went through the proof more carefully and, and tried to, to get a threshold beyond which you can guarantee that every number is some of three primes and lowering the th threshold as, as best one can. Um, the best result known from 2002 is that any large, any odd number bigger than 10 to the 1 1346 is uh, some of three primes. Um, so in principle, that means that there's only a finite number of cases left to check. Uh, although this is unfortunately, this is far too many to, to do uh, directly. The, uh, we, we do know that every number less than 10 to the 20 is the sum of three primes by a completely different method, uh, but uh, that's about the best we can do with uh, modern computers. So there's still a gap there. Um, I mentioned the twin prime conjecture, uh, which is if there should be infinitely many pairs of numbers, p, p plus two, that which are both prime. Uh, we can't prove that, but we can come in some sense very close. We have Chen's theorem, uh, the great uh, Chinese mathematician, Jin Rong Chen, um, show that uh, there are infinitely many pairs p, p plus two, where p is a prime, and p plus two is what we call an almost prime. It's either a prime or the product of two primes. So it may be factored, but, in, but can only be factored once. Okay, so it doesn't have too many factors. Um, so it's close. Um, there's a reason, and there's a reason why you can't go beyond that. There's something called the parity problem, which is a, a major problem in number theory. Um, to, to break this, this would be a major achievement. But this, this, is, this is the best we can do with current technology. Um, it, uh, the proof is, again, really quite complicated, and uh, I can't give it here, but it does use um, um, something, uh, well, it, it, it uses uh, a very advanced form of sieve theory, which is something which you may have learned uh, back in high school. Uh, so a sieve is one way to, to understand the primes. So here is the sieve of Eratosthenes, uh, which is the, the most elementary sieve. They're, they're much more advanced sieves. But um, to, to find primes, what you can do is that you can take all the numbers say, from 1 to 64 in this example, and you, uh, you strike out the multiples of 2. Those are the red lines. Uh, you strike out the multiples of 3, and those, that's, the, that's the blue line, and the multiples of 5, and those are the green lines, and the multiples of 7, those are the purple lines. And uh, in fact, at that point, when you stop, uh, all you have left, actually, every, um, all the remaining numbers are prime at this point in this square. You only have to go up to the square root of, of so square root 64 is 8. And, okay, and also 1, but 1 is not a prime. And you can actually, uh, so I won't tell you how, but by using things like this sieve, you can actually prove this theorem. Okay, um, and then there's my theorem with Ben Green uh, that we proved uh, about four years ago. That, uh, so we can't find twins in the primes. There's a good reason for that, actually. But uh, we can find other patterns in the primes. So uh, we can show at least that they contain um, another type of pattern, an arithmetic progression. So uh, we can find arithmetic progressions of any length. So for example, uh, up here is the first progression of primes of length one. Here's the first one of length two, length three, length four. Um, you can keep going. You will find that if you want to find progressions of longer length, uh, you have to look, use bigger primes. Um, and the primes actually get bigger rather rapidly after a while. Um, the biggest progression of primes that has actually been found by computers uh, was found this year as a, a progression of length 25, and it's, it's down there. That was a progression of primes of length 25. And that's, um, that for we know that's the first one. Um, so they get pretty big. Um, and that's, a, that's the largest one that we've actually found by computer, but our theorem tells you that actually they go on forever, that somewhere out there there was a pro progression of primes of length 1,000, 1, 1 million, and so forth. Um, as with other results in number theory, we don't say exactly where they are. The proof is, again, indirect. Uh, what we do is that we, uh, we estimate how many progressions of a certain length there are in a certain interval, and we show that this, 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 uh, we get a lower bound on the number of progressions in a certain interval, and we show it's non-zero, which implies indirectly that somewhere out there there must be a progression of primes, but we don't give a recipe to, to, where, to where to find it. Um, 